So we'll have a lesson on this um, Allegro by Giuliani. And this piece comes from my grade three repertoire lessons book. Um, but you can watch the video for free and just learn tips from the video and uh, musical ideas. Or if you want to pick up the music, you can, you can buy the book. There's a link for that under the video. Um, and the book kind of has like one or two pages of lesson material um, followed by the actual piece to kind of teach students uh, musical ideas as they learn pieces. Before we have the lesson for this piece, um, I just want to say like you can practice this quite a bit slower. You can perform this quite a bit slower um, to make the muting and the slurs a lot easier. Playing it a lot slower, you'll still get all the skills you need. Um, and as long as you have a nice even rhythm and you're, you're relatively nice and legato, um, that's okay to go quite a bit slower for this particular piece. So up to this point in my books, I haven't given you like a real slur workout. And uh, that's the first thing that we'll work on. So the first thing I've written out is all the slurs in the piece. So if you have a, if you have like a piece you're studying that has lots of slurs in it, um, hammer-ons and pull-offs in guitar lingo, then um, you can isolate them and just practice them as a warm-up. So in this piece, instead of practicing, you know, going through the whole piece, we could just practice the actual, actual slurs. So the first one is a descending 4-1. The next one is a 2-1 D to C. Remember when you're doing your downward slurs, if you lift your finger right off, it'll be, produce a very soft second note. If you flick your finger down towards your palm, you'll get a loud second note. Um, I would aim for that. And when you're on a, on a string, like from the second string upward, you can even do like a little rest stroke in the left hand where the finger actually plucks downward and hits the string below. Mm, when you're actually playing other pieces, you might not want to do that. You might want to do a combination, but you want to practice those two ways. So lifting your fingers off for a soft second note and flicking your finger down for a clear second note. And then you can adjust and do somewhere in between those two things based on how much clarity you need um, when you're playing. If you hear that it's a little muffled, it's not very clear, then you need more of that pluck. It's kind of like bringing your finger down across the strings like that. So the third slur would be two one or two open, sorry. One two. Hammer on. Pull off. Uh, one two hammer on. Three, four, hammer on. It's tough to get that snappiness, but sometimes you know if you don't even if you don't even use your right hand, and you try to like hit the string to make it make sound, you'll learn what the kind of light snappiness um, is required for it. Because it doesn't require strength, of course. These strings are very wimpy, but um, it does require like a snappy, reflex-oriented motion, just light and snappy. And then one, two, and then four, three. So whatever piece you're working on that has slurs, just take the slurs out of context and practice them on their own to make sure that you're good at them. That would be a basic first step for a slur, etude, or piece, right? The next thing in this piece is muting the bass notes. Giuliani is very specific about adding a, a rest after each quarter note bass note. He could have made them half notes, but no, he specifically put a rest. So we're going to mute it by placing our thumb back on the bass string um, after playing that note. This is pretty tough. So one thing I'll say right off the bat is that um, if you're more on the beginner side or you're just approaching this grade three level, um, then I would say practice the piece without muting at first. Get to know the piece be able to play the piece and enjoy the piece and work on your slurs and then add this muting afterwards um, so that 
it's not like one more element that um, frustrates you or anything like that. You want your experience to be very musical and very calm. So learn the piece first and then add the muting afterwards. I've written out just the first few bars, but essentially it's this. It's we play the bass note and on the th second beat, we place our thumb back on the bass to stop the sound. Mute. Mute. The thing is in this piece is that there's upper notes that are going on. So, mute, 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 mute. So every time you mute a string, it's in combination with playing an upper note. So you have to be very careful that you're actually um, synchronizing it, that your thumb is coming down on the bass string at the same time that you're index or middle finger are playing another note. So mute, 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 mute. And if you have trouble doing that or you're forgetting and you're accidentally, accidentally letting things ring, just play up to each rest. So, um, well, and also play the upper note. That way you can hear the muted, the mute, and the upper note, and then play from that rest to the next mute, then from that. That way you'll really be able to tell if you're doing it, because you, you just have to get the skill going, right? And it might take you um, an hour, or it might take you five minutes, it might take you an hour, it might take you a week, it might take you a month, it doesn't really matter. It's just the skill that you need to put into your hand. So you need to program your hand to be able to do that. So you break, you break it down as much as you have to. If you can't just go through the piece doing this, then um, just go up to each rest, stop, and make sure you're successful. And if you're successful, you should feel good about yourself, and you should feel good about your practice session. And um, and then you'll just progress from there over time. So that's a tough element to do throughout the whole piece because you'll find all the different combinations and the left hand requirements, it'll be tough to also think about the right hand. So as I said, learn the piece first, maybe, and then add the mutes after you've learned the piece. One last thing, a couple of chord shapes for the piece. Um, not all of these shapes that I'm showing you right now are in the piece specifically but I'm gonna show them to you because it's just good to expand your knowledge. So the first shape is going to be um, the shape from the very, the second to last bar. That's like, that's part of the full A chord, like your bar chord A. Um, so you have your full A minor, A major chord. You probably all know that one. And then you can reduce it to this. You have this D chord, that's from the last bar of the piece. So it's like you have your D and your F sharp and a high D. Let's set the seventh fret. You could also play um, this D chord here. So this is like D, F sharp, A, D, and F sharp if you want. It's kind of a tough one. You can skip it if it's a, a little too difficult, although you should try to learn it. Um, full D major chord up here, and another D major chord down at the 5th fret. This sometimes gives people trouble cramming the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th finger in here, but just follow the diagrams, you'll be fine. You just want to start to get to know these, um, these chords. This is my grade 3 book, I'm going to also do grade 4, and then after grade 4 I'm going to do a fingerboard um, knowledge book, um, which will teach you lots of shapes and all the, all the music theory for the guitar that you need to know. But for now it's just nice to like fill out a little bit of your knowledge, right? By the way, the muting at the end, when you play this A chord, and then this D chord, you have to mute the A string. So I do it by placing my thumb on the D string and making sure that the back part of my thumb hits the A. So you can see when I put my thumb down on the D string, I'm muting the A string. 
that's another like little trick for muting. You could also do it with the left hand. But mm, sometimes it's really nice to just do it with the right hand because the left hand has things it has to do. It has to get the next chord shape. So um, I don't think you'll find the rest of the piece too difficult, but putting those things together is quite challenging. So um, in some ways this piece is like a grade two piece, but if you throw that muting into the mix, uh, it's definitely grade three or four. Um, so uh, like I said, practice your slurs, then practice the piece in its entirety, then add the mute, the muting uh, with your thumb into the mix and see how it goes. And just give it lots of time so you, you gain the skill um, when you're, and, and then once you have the skill in your hand, um, I don't think you'll find it too tricky.